to her. I told her the That's story good. about the luncheon. Okay, anyway. So we're talking about carnivore diets. And it's interesting because I honestly, I have no interest in the carnivore diet. It's not something I want to do in my own life. But I know it works for a lot of people. And animals are geared towards a carnivorous lifestyle. Whether we would like them to think, whether we would like to think that or not, that's what their proclivity is towards eating. They are hunters. Like your cat, you might not like that your cat hunts down animals, but that's what a cat does in a CNA. If you left a cat outside, it's not going to go look for cauliflower. It's, it may eat some grass, but it spits up the grass. It doesn't digest the grass. It wants to eat lizards and birds. Same with dogs. Like if you gave them a chance, they would hunt down small prey. And just one example, like we were horrified by it, but the dog loved it. She found a deer leg, a decomposed deer leg in the forest, and we took it away from her. But oh my gosh, buddy, she thought that was a prize. And when we took it away from her, she looked so sad. The only reason we took it away was it wasn't fresh. She found a decomposing, rotting deer leg in the forest and just wanted to chew on it. And I'm sure that that was what she wanted to do, but we didn't really want it near our house. So we had to take it away. But if she could have had her way, she would have gnawed on that deer leg for many, many hours. Yep. I wonder, do you think that if you shared this live stream, Julia, on Twitter, um, oh, this is still about COPPA. Okay, I have to edit this. Do you want me to share it on Twitter? Or is that what you're asking? Yes, but I'm afraid that it doesn't say the right things yet. Okay, let me uh, go check. Um, I will do that. I have to log back into Twitter because I have I have an extreme disuse of Twitter. I used to use it. I don't know what happened, but I just got to the point that I have things tweeting themselves. Okay, this is what's happened with my Twitter account. I am I'm losing followers all the time, and then I go into this Twitter um usage app where it shows me that like almost all of my followers are not active and I mm. and I get a few views from Twitter like I guess you get more I know more people follow you on Twitter yeah I'm, I'm sort of political over there so I do have some followers there plus my mother loves Twitter. no I know I'm gonna go ahead and tweet it but it's like I don't get it like every time I tweet something like when I actually go in to tweet something oh I like this tweet that you posted by the way um when I go to tweet something uh -huh. I don't know what it is people are like they just start unfollowing me like I lost five followers one day when I tweeted something that I thought was just benign it wasn't anything bad but all of a sudden like five people unfollowed me I don't know but I'm gonna go some tweet this right now so okay, I, just, I, I, I am going to try to tweet it as well, and I'm going to apologize to you, but I can't seem to find the place to edit what it says. It says that it's oh, about Papa okay. and children, but because this is my secondary account, I don't know why. Oh, I see. I see what it's you're saying. It's not letting me edit that, but let me try. Well, let me just look because I'm still trying to get there, and yeah, it is still talking about Papa. I do see that. Let me... But maybe we can take care of that afterwards, like maybe later. Yeah, we won't worry I'm, about it then. I, I'm now just trying to find what's going on on my channel. Um, because I am in this in two computers. Okay, so when I tweet it, though, I think it's okay, and this is why, because it's just going to give the title. So, yes, if you go to YouTube and you read the description, somebody might be like, oh, it's talking about COPPA. But if you see the title on Twitter, let me tweet it at you, though, because I just realized if I don't tweet it at you, it's not your mom's not going to see it. Okay. So this whole thing about... The carnivore diet, I still, okay, I get it. I know that, like, I took, because I don't really care what people eat. I have no problems with that whatsoever. I just have to be, like, 100% honest, and I think it's good that I am. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, of course. It's so course. unappealing to me. Like, I just, I'm kind of like, okay, people eat that way. 
but I can't even fathom it. Like, I'm just, just going to be honest with you. I'm like, right. no, I'm like, it doesn't look good to me. Like I would even back when I ate meat, like if somebody told me, well, you just need to eat meat. Like I would be so bored and I understand like the nutritional component, but I, I have to throw this out here. Like just my reaction, I enjoy food and I enjoy like eating things that taste good. And I feel like, I don't know, I would feel so deprived, like mentally, like I would feel so mentally unstimulated. I would probably eat less and I would just see myself withering away. So I just don't, it's not for me. Like, I guess like, that's all oh no, I lost the title now. Okay. So I'm, that's just my only reaction to, but I think for animals, like I think the carnivore diet makes complete sentence, like for animals. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, this is not about forcing anybody to do anything. Everybody gets to decide for themselves what they're yeah, going to do. And sure. even animals, you know, if you have an animal who does better on vegetables, then but, but obviously do what's good for your animal. Um, have you, uh, is there a way that you could somehow, uh, when you're tweeting, could you sort of mention me? Uh, That's what I'm trying to do right now because I have. To, I was going to hit retweet. Tag me because, me yeah, I don't. Tweet. Because this is my secondary channel, I don't know why, but it's really hard for me to share that on Twitter. Whereas it would have been really easy for me to do on my main me, channel. Yeah, I think it's because it's your secondary one. I'm trying to get back to the video where I can. I'm going to have to make sure I get. I had cats when I okay. So when I, go I did, I, I, yeah, and I did, I think I changed what it says about the, okay, I will check one more time. Okay. See, this is the funny thing is I was going in and I hit the share tweet button too fast and I wanted to put it at Aya Cats, not just at YouTube. So let me make sure that this time it says the right thing. So it says at Aya Cats, but the description is still talking about Kappa, oh. but to our credit, YouTube is a little clunky, so whatever. It's not our fault. I think YouTube has taken a lot of usability away. First with getting rid of Google Hangouts, now with Kappa, and now a lot of other things. So it's not that we didn't try. You know, they don't make it, like, their site's not user-friendly anymore, really, in a lot of ways. I think they're just catering. They want you to buy their service to watch movies and shows. That seems to be their main focus, I feel like. They're losing a lot of the features that I think made them usable and user-friendly and interactive. Right. Well, hopefully this won't happen on my main channel because we are going to have Amber O'Hearn as our guest. And she's going to be talking about the carnivore diet. Mm -hmm. Um, and that will be tomorrow at 8.45 p.m. Central Time or 6.45 your time, right? Yes, 6.45 my time. I'm very fascinated to hear what she says. I think for animals that this is a great way for them to sustain their health. Like, I think it's a viable well, option. And yeah. for people, too, because I know, okay... <clears throat> Just to throw it out there, there's this vegan girl. She's getting a lot of heat right now because she had a lot of digestive issues. So she tried the carnivore diet for 30 days and she actually had okay things to say about it. She said that she's not going to be completely carnivore, but she shared that she had so many digestive issues with like plant fiber that she finds eating more animal products, like maybe 80% animal products and maybe 20% plants works for her like she actually had really positive things to say but guess who was like attacking her on her video do you know who was attacking her no <laughs> can you guess like she used to be a vegan so vegans yeah. yeah so like supposedly they're so compassionate but I don't think vegans are compassionate people at all they're not compassionate because they went to her video she hasn't been vegan for like I don't know a year and they uh -huh. sought her out and they started downvoting her video and attacking her in the comments so yeah, yeah, I don't want to be negative with anyone. I believe, you know, being a libertarian, I believe anybody can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. uh, it's your life, my life, the, the dog's life, the cat's mm -hmm. life, the parrot's life. And we have to do what's best for each of us. And yeah. 
we can't tell other people what to do and I would never ever presume to tell Oh anyone. no, you wouldn't. I just that's why I'm trying to say is like I might eat a certain way, but I'm appalled that people sought somebody out that said after a year that they just wanted to eat differently. So they went looking for her like after a year just to call her out. I don't think there's anything compassionate about that. So you can't exactly pretend that your lifestyle is compassionate if you're a part of a community that does that all the time. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and here's the thing, you said animals. Now there are many animals who are plant-based in their diet and it's perfectly normal. Mm -hmm. uh, so for instance, cows are, you know, it's not a good idea to feed meat to cattle. I would never do that. Oh, no. Yeah. So it's not like all animals are the same, but the no. thing that's interesting about cattle is that they have many different stomachs and that what they're actually doing is they're taking the fiber and they're turning it into something that they can make energy out of. So they're not actually on a glucose metabolism when they are eating plants. Mm -hmm. And what is of interest to me is what the metabolism is that you are using. You know, that's very interesting to me right now, rather than what are you eating? So what I'm interested in is what are you doing with what you're eating? You, you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying, like the ketosis component. I know there's a metabolic component. I totally get that. There's just two things I think for humans that will stop them. Joy of food and being able to stick with something. I think it's a very hard diet for the majority of people to stick with. Because I talked to some people about this yesterday. Let me ask you what's your new topic? And I said, oh, carnivore diet. And they're like, what's that? Even people who eat meat, they didn't know what carnivore diet was. And they go, that, that's omnivore, right? And I'm like, no. They're like, it's omnivore, right? And I said, no. <laughs> and they kept, they, and I said, Google it. And they still couldn't, like after 20 minutes, like somebody was like, they still didn't, they, but they go, but uh, yeah, you know what uh, I'm saying? I know what you're saying, but I, I just watched a video from about two weeks ago where Amber O'Hearn was on somebody else's show. Okay. Yeah. And she mentioned that it, she's not doing this for the ideology. It's not like, oh, it has to be meat based or, or you're going to hell or something like that. It's not like that. She does it for health. And what she suggests that people do is go on a complete carnivore for a while, just to see how you feel. And then you can start to add some, other things back into your diet I mean if you feel really good add things one at a time to see if it makes you sick or not mm -hmm. it's basically your basic elimination diet so she mentioned and I didn't know this before but she mentioned that she can have pickles well oh. pickles are not you know generally speaking they're not what we think of as a, a carnivore element and, and when I went off the carnivore diet, it was because I needed something acidic and I needed pickles. <laughs> so I didn't know that pickles were okay. And apparently they are. I guess because it's mostly water soluble. It's a water rich, there isn't as much fiber in a cucumber, which- but, uh, There's a reason, we, yeah, it, it's not really the issue of fiber or not fiber in that case, but what I needed I think was the acid and also pickles have microbes in them. Oh, okay. So that's an interesting point because early on in the carnivore diet, the, the idea was you don't have to worry about microbes anymore if you are completely carnivore. So I don't know, you know, this is all interesting and different from what I thought. Okay. I guess what I'm trying to say is even people who eat meat, they don't really understand like what this is. Like if you tell somebody this diet is just about animal products, the average person is going to say, oh, really? Like they're confused. Do you see what I'm saying? Like even just yeah. people. Yeah, I know a lot of people who like steak and have no problem with eating steak also like potatoes and have no problem with eating potatoes. So like yeah. steak and potatoes and they don't think they would enjoy their steak as much if they didn't also have potatoes or if they didn't have salt and pepper to put on their steak and all sorts of other things. So yeah, uh, different people. But you know, the people who don't take any of this too seriously, 
they're not they're not trying to be kosher they're not trying to uh adhere to the diet for the sake of some kind of uh superiority over other people Mm -hmm. you know and they're not saying oh i don't need plants at all uh and (laughs) i'll never have a plant again Mm -hmm. you know but they're, they're just saying i eat a majority of meat and these are the exceptions and they list the exceptions that they do eat which are plant based um those are the people who are less crazy, I think. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. I mean, it's not about, ex- like, people perceive the carnivores as being extremists, like maybe the extremist vegans. Like, okay, there's like a spectrum and you have like these raw vegans that are like really extreme, but it turns out the carnivores aren't really even that extreme because they're like, they're doing this for their health. They're not doing this to preach a religion. So it's actually more of a personal lifestyle than like this philosophy that they're trying to push to the major populace, I guess. Right. And and certainly that's how I take it. I I can't say that I'm a purist in anything. I I mix foods. I do all sorts of things which are convenient for me. And let's face it, I'm not rich. So I can't have a steak every day. You know, if I were, that would be completely different. But, you know, I have chicken and I have other things. Yeah. and it would be really hard to find like that good wall because I know people like they have to go out of their way to find like the nice grass fed. It, it wouldn't be easy like to always do that every day, even if you are rich. Like you have to consider geography and things like that too, right? Yeah. So one of the things I want to ask Amber or Hearn is if she went to Israel, what would she eat if she were there? You know, and if she were staying with a friend who wasn't also not rich, you know, <laughs> you, it. And also just cultural expectations, because like I said, like people, it's the holidays and you tell people, okay, no matter what type of diet, you can't have a certain food. People are going to be confused. They're like, but it's the holidays. I want to eat this and this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. But I mean, you should do whatever is right for you. Nobody should sort of sucker you into eating something that you don't like. So, I mean, I have. I had the experience of accidentally eating something that had mushrooms in it and I'm allergic to mushrooms. So I got sick, you know, and I don't want that. Um, So I do want, I would prefer to be told, Oh, there are mushrooms in that. So I can avoid that thing. Right. Yeah. Let me turn that off. I'm so sorry. I thought it was, I don't know why it's I'm so sorry. And it's a scam caller because that's what we get these days. I'm so sorry. That's okay. (laughs) That's okay. So anyway, I wanted to talk about animal nutrition today rather than human nutrition. And we certainly don't, again, I'm not in this for the ideology. And if something works for your dog, cat, parrot, whatever, that's great. Uh, But there are people whose dogs are getting sick on dog food. Yeah, that makes sense because it's cornmeal based, right? Well, I'm going to share with you some dog foods. Now, it might be that Summer will run away because Summer is afraid of large items. And so um, this might fly away now because this is a dog food container. I mean, you know, (laughs) wrapper, and he might not like it because he might think it's attacking him. That's a smaller bag of dog food than I used to see, like the big 25-pound bags. I'm just going to read you the content without scaring summer too much because he's getting kind of upset about this um okay so uh it's crude it's got 27 percent crude protein uh 12 percent crude fat notice too much protein not enough fat because re- what they're really after is the fat um crude fiber four percent probably too much Um, uh, moisture, 12%. This is dry dog food. I don't know what in the world they mean by moisture. Well, they have to put some water in to mix it up because it has like a cornmeal base. You have to liquefy it to mix it in, like the meat. To mix it, to make the... Yeah, but... It's like making a big cornmeal ball. Yeah, but I I mean, afterwards, doesn't that evaporate? Mm -hmm. It dries up, but it's still in there, like... They add that to it, so it's still going to be listed. They have to list everything that's added. Okay, well, that in, that in itself is insane. I want to know what's in here, not what they added. Because if what they added went away, then it's not there anymore. 
Oh, you know what I'm saying? Unless they're putting in another kind of liquid that they're not telling you about. Right, I mean, I would... so, look, I mean, if it's, let's say the moisture is water. Mm -hmm. Well, that's H2O. So you, you would list it as either water or H2O. Uh, to call it moisture and not let us know whether it's fat, oil, uh, water, what, I mean, do you see what, what I'm no, saying? No, I see what you're saying. They're, they're being a little, they're not telling you everything. <laughs> Something is wrong with that. That's not the purpose of the ingredient count, okay? Okay, now calcium 1%. Phosphorus, 0.8%, zinc, 80 milligrams per kilogram. Uh, vitamin E is 100 IU per ki uh, kilogram. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, calorie content is 3417 kcal for ME over kg and 315 kcal ME per cup. Okay, now here are the ingredients. Now I'm gonna list you the ingredients. Ground whole grain corn. That's the biggest ingredient there, corn. Corn, Ground not surprising. Corn. It tastes like cornmeal, I've tasted it. At... <laughs> okay, the next biggest thing is meat and bone meals. And that's a source of calcium, they say. So that is not for nutrition. You know, it's not for caloric nutrition. No. It is just so they'll get their calcium. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, chicken byproduct meal. Mm -hmm. And you might think, well, is that the source of meat? But here it says it's a source of glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate. That's what it's the source of. No. So it's not a source of fat, apparently. Okay. No, nope. it's just the byproduct. It's basically the parts of the food that are not as savory. Yeah, it, that are not nutritious is really what it is. No, it's it's pretty bad. I, I don't it's not Okay, bad. now corn gluten meal. Uh, so that's basically gluten. You know how much trouble many of us have with gluten dogs also. You're putting that in the in the dog food? The gluten? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, after that, after all those things, it says animal fat. Now, let me tell you, animal fat is what dogs eat for. That's what they really want. So um, animal fat is, is after all that stuff. And uh, they say it's a source of omega-6 fatty acids. Okay, well, that's what we all crave. <laughs> you know, we crave that. And yeah. dogs crave that. Um, but it's not the main ingredient. After the, after the animal fat, there's soybean meal, ground whole grain wheat, ground whole grain wheat. After huh. that, some beef, some natural flavor. I never know what they mean by natural flavor. They do that with our food too. Yeah, they, they won't tell you what natural flavor is. It could be anything, really. And after that, we have some dried plain beet pulp. Why does a dog need that in his food? I don't know. Like, why does a lot of the things that they put in our food, like, I'm like, there's like filler, like filler ingredients that they put into food for human consumption. And it's not really something that's necessary. And after that salt, and after the salt, brewer's rice, then potassium chloride, then lamb meal, then calcium carbonate, then choline chloride, then dried peas. Okay, yeah, well, dried peas. Yeah, me, I want to go eat some of this. <laughs> I'm gonna make myself a big, I did once when I was seven. Yeah, well, listen, I mean, poor people sometimes eat dog food, but dog food is not what it used to be. It used oh, to be- That was back in the 80s too. Who knows what it would do now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it used to be not such a bad thing, but okay, dl methionine. I do not even know what that is. Huh, well, we could Google and find out. But... Yeah, but there's so many other ingredients I have to get through. Vitamin E supplement, monocalcium phosphate, zinc sulfate, yellow six, because, oh my goodness, if this huh. were not colored yellow six, the dog would not eat it. <laughs> uh, dried carrots okay l-tryptophan red 40 oh it's not enough that we colored it yellow now we had to color it red 
Well, uh, some of the pieces have to be red and yellow. You know, you need that contrast because your dog really cares about the color contrast <laughs> of its food. It's very important to the dog. <laughs> Dogs are colorblind. You do know that, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why I'm being, I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yellow five, niacin. Okay, niacin is probably necessary, but you would get it from meat if this were meat, you understand. Uh, blue two, another color, because blue food is so common. <laughs> uh, decalcium pantothenate, it's a source of vitamin B5. Copper sulfate, vitamin A supplement, sodium selen selenite, Potassium iodide, riboflavin supplement, which is vitamin B2, uh, vitamin B12 supplement. Okay, so when you get elderly, you get to have B12 supplements because you're running low on it. Thymine mononitrate, which is vitamin B1, vitamin D3 supplement, uh, pyrodoxin hydrochloride, which is vitamin B6, and folic acid. Okay, so this is what a dog gets when he's on a high protein with red meat, beef and lamb flavor, pedigree, kibble. I have a bag of cat food I can bring in. <laughs> okay. You want me to? Let me yes. Let me see. I can find it. It's lost. I don't know where the big dry one is, but I have this like little one and I don't really know. We thought it, oh, sorry. Okay. I'm not really sure. Like I thought this was okay, but I, I'm not really even sure because a lot of it is um, crude protein, 5%, crude fat, 0.1%. Why is it so low? That's bad, yeah. Crude fiber, 0.5%. And then the ingredients are water. Water's the main ingredient. Tuna, natural and artificial flavor. Tapioca starch, gargum, wheat starch, potato starch. This is worse than I thought. I, it's a lot of starches added to it. Natural tuna flavor, sugar, salt potato starch again, um, soy protein isolate, xanthan gum, locust bean gum, all sorts of fillers. It's worse than I thought. Yeah, I've got one of those types of things too. This is the slightly more watery thing. And the thing is, yes, dogs do tend to love uh, wet dog food over dry dog food, but the wetness that they're really looking for is fat, not water. Okay, yeah. that's what they're really craving. So uh, this one has got uh, sufficient water for processing is the first ingredient, okay? And then chicken, then meat byproducts, then pork liver, then beef, then animal plasma, which I assume is just blood, which is okay. Blood is okay. Uh, then wheat gluten. Why did they have to put wheat gluten? See. Uh, I'll tell you what, my dogs do like this a lot better than the kibble. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Leo, Leo can't digest the kibble anymore. He's older. Mm -hmm. He's, he's eight years old and he, he just can't. So I don't give him any kibble, mm -hmm. but because I'm not rich, I do give some kibble, uh, to Romy, but not that much. Okay. They prefer this. They prefer the wet food and our cat got really constipated and they didn't tell us that but we were able to find that out on google because it, just eating the dry cat food was not good for our cat right and so there are a lot of dogs that are now not living as long and maybe cats as well as they used to and it's it's not because of their um you know it's it, it's not because of genetics it's because of what they're eating mm -hmm. And there are very innocent people, and I'm sure they mean well, who love their dogs and who will take them to the vet when they see that they're not digesting the food. And the vet will put them on a no protein diet or a no fat diet or a low fat diet and makes it worse. And then they have to take them for sonograms and all sorts of crazy things. And then they start GoFundMes for them. And if you just gave 
the dog some meat, probably the dog would be okay. Yeah, probably would be. I mean, but I honestly, I don't, I can't afford to do that. Like I can't afford yeah. to take my animal to the vet all the time. So we had to figure out a solution on our own and we just gave, I mean, this isn't the best. I think they're probably something better, but the wet food was better than the dry food. I know that. Right. And here's what I do. But again, as I said, I'm not rich. Uh, so, you know, if I were rich, I would give them steak every day, you know, and that would be what they ate. But since I don't get to eat steak every day either, uh, that's not what I do. But I, I do. Um, I have Cornish hens myself mm -hmm. uh, for dinner. And Bo and I share that, but we also share with the dogs. Yeah, that's so, nice. Uh, so the dogs get uh, the bones and the parts of the meat that we didn't get around to eating and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And they love it. And I know there are a lot of people in the United States who actually truly believe that dogs will die if you give them a bone. They, no, they, 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 they like bones. Did, I, <laughs> did you hear the deer leg story that I was telling uh, about no? the dog? Well, we had a dog and we had to take it away from her because it was a decomposing deer leg and we didn't really oh. want it near our house but guess what she went in the forest one day and she found this decomposing deer leg and she thought it was tasty and she's going to town on it but we did take it away because we don't know why the deer passed away and that yeah. was but she was very upset and she was like oh my god she took away my treasure well, you know, back in the day when I, I lived in Israel and we were taking care of a dog for a year, it wasn't our dog, but anyway, we would get butcher, uh, we would go to the butcher store and we'd get uh, chicken heads and chicken legs because mm -hmm. that's what the butcher had left over that nobody wanted, you know? Yeah. So, so it was cheap, but it was good for the dog. For dogs, and yeah, they would eat that. But I'll tell you another thing. The dog preferred to have it uh, decomposing rather than fresh because that's like cooking it. So what he would do is he would bury the fresh ones and then he would unbury <laughs> the, <laughs> the ones that had been out there for a while and he'd eat those. Yeah, that's what they do. I know that's what they do. I just didn't really want a decomposing deer leg. Your yeah no no I understand and right now there's something okay well we don't have summer with us anymore <laughs> he decided to fly off but cage. anyway he um, gave you cage. <laughs> right exactly he gets to decide nobody forces him one way or another yeah and I can tell you that he is very into oatmeal and the oatmeal that I make is well, it's made with oats and milk and some brown sugar. And I don't know if that's good for him, but he likes it. He likes he keeps, it. it. Yeah, he keeps insisting I give it to him. And he's also on a diet of seeds. But the people in the, the parrot community are trying to get everybody to give them pellets instead. And the pellets are something I imagine very similar to dog and cat food, which is kibble. You know, yeah. it's the dry kind. And seeds are mostly fat but it seems to be good for birds because that's what birds like that's what they want to eat like i don't understand why all of a sudden we're gonna stop not letting them eat what they like and what's good for them digestive wise right and i'm sure that if, if there were bugs around they would eat the bugs too um they eat worms if you give them a chance i thought it was only early in the morning like the expression says oh they're early but no one day in the middle of the day i saw this bird it was so excited because it pulled a worm out of the ground and i was just watching I'm like oh i finally saw that i never thought i would see it but i saw a bird pull a worm out of the ground and it ate it it was very happy <laughs> Right. So I, I, I think that we're already depriving our parrots of some animal product that they would normally have in the wild. But why deprive them of the energy from a seed? I don't understand why we would do that. Yeah. Um, like, honestly, like, just let, I don't know, let the bird eat the seeds. And if it accidentally ate an insect, that's what it wanted to do anyway. Right, exactly. And I have this theory, I want to ask Amber about it. But, you know, ever since I found out about rice and worms, and that came up twice, and it was in terms of Chinese uh, things. Once when I was in Taiwan, I bought a whole bag of rice, I thought I was going to be so frugal, you know, 
I was going to be such a frugal person. I had this bag of rice. I had a rice cooker and I had this all planned out. But before long, even though I had it in a closed, sealed off plastic container that was practically vacuum packed, Things got um, into it. Uh, I, I don't think that something got into it. I think there were weevils in with the... Oh, I see what you're saying. Like already in there. It was... Yeah, because unless when, you, when you're processing the rice, unless you're very careful, uh, those are going to be in there too. And they're going to come out eventually. Mm -hmm. So uh, in America, I think it's quite interesting that that never happened to me. I've had rice for years and there were never any weevils in it. And I never had to go through it to find the weevils. Um, so that yeah. must mean that we use some kind of poison against insects in on American rice. Mm -hmm. Oh, like a pesticide to deter it, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think they do that. They, it's very, they want it very sterile, but yet they're treating it with a chemical that is... Right. Well, and, and then they tell us you shouldn't eat rice because there's arsenic in it. Well, how did that arsenic get there? Because they spray it on the crop and it's scary. Just like, why? I don't know. There's a lot of other things. I'm like, why is this in the food supply? Why is that? In the food supply? Oh. So, so here's my question uh, that I don't know the answer to, but it's just a suspicion that I have. And then I read about the people at the camp at Wei Xian and they were serving rice, but there were worms in the rice. Well, it could be that those worms helped to keep those prisoners alive because they weren't getting much meat. Mm -hmm. And so even though that doesn't sound very good, it might have been better than just getting rice. Probably. Uh -huh. I mean, if that if you didn't have anything to eat and your only other source of protein was the worm, it sounds disgusting, but it might have been the difference between death and survival. I don't think you could survive on just rice. Yeah, you can't. And, and of course, that rice was boiled. So uh, any disease that there might have been, you know, in the worms would be dead, you know, that's so actually the same thing in that book about the Bataan survivors, same situation, that's what they give them just rice. And it was actually worse, because they didn't even get much of it. And they kind of had to do other jobs, to even get a little bit like it was a, an extreme starvation diet, the fat, like half the population died that winter at that camp. Right. Well, well, the thing is that there was this woman there who had an identical twin. Uh, the, the Lilla character, she was a real person. And she mm -hmm. really had an identical twin in who was in London during the Blitz. And uh, she lived nine years longer than her twin because she had been on that starvation diet. Oh. At, so it's all interesting. It's very interesting. I mean, I've heard that. I've heard that if you do survive on a limited, like a, there is some scientific research that show people that survive a calorie deficit that it can lead to long. I have heard that other end of the spectrum, but some people. Yeah, no, nobody wants that to happen to them, but that's just some other interesting information you might say well that's anecdotal that's just two women who happen to be identical twins but there were studies of other people and that were there no there too. was a like some studies in the scientific america i think just talking about like diet calories that were deficient in what was considered a standard caloric diet showing that that could contribute to longevity i have heard some of the research on that right so we might not be sparing the poor by feeding them, especially overfeeding them on the right, wrong kind of food, you know. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you want to fatten somebody up, then by all means, give them a grain diet. That's true of horses too, you know. I mean, it's better to let your horse graze out on, on grass than to grain feed it. But a lot of times they will grain feed our cattle uh, in the slaughterhouse because they want them to be fat. Mm -hmm. Well, eating copious amounts of grains probably isn't good for anyone, I would say. Right, it, exactly. So if we don't want to be fat, we shouldn't, you know, be feeding ourselves on grain. Uh, and in the case of a chimpanzee, I don't know. Uh, 
uh, that's one of the things I want to ask Amber. Oh, look who's here. Look He's who's back. Here. <laughs> there yes. he is. He decided to come back. He's not so scared of that dog food anymore. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, uh, chimpanzees, uh, while they love meat, will usually get uh, mostly a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. But the question is, how do they digest it? And uh, which kind is best, you know? Oh, I see. Like, like ideally closer to what, but if Bo grew up with humans, he can't just eat as a chimpanzee would in the wild, I would think. He wouldn't, like, no, what do they but... eat? But what would they eat that he, like, like Let's if they hunt me, what do they eat is my question. Okay, well, they would eat something that is much higher fiber. So if they ate a fruit, most of that fruit would not be sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes they eat leaves and, you know, it, but then they have to digest it over and over again mm -hmm. to get anything out of it. But then they could go into ketosis rather than do a gly glycogen based diet. So all of that is confusing. You know, it really isn't all about whether it's a plant or an animal. It's about how you digest it. What if there's some humans that die, like, I think I have a pretty strong digestive system. Like, I think I can handle a lot of things because, okay, for example, you know, the tannic acid and acorns, they like, say so you have to soak them, that they're poisonous, that so you can't eat them raw. But mm -hmm. did I tell you as a kid that we used to sometimes just eat them raw because we were kids and we were like, here it is. And we would crush them open and we would eat them and nothing happened to me. I'm not sure I would do that today, but I ate a few of them and nothing. I mean, I'm not recommending that. I'm not saying anybody should go out and eat acorns raw, but people would say, well, you could die if you did that. So I don't know, like I had already ate some and I didn't die. Well, there's a lot of stuff they tell you when you're a kid not to do or you'll die and you do it anyway and you don't die. <laughs> yeah, but my question is like, I don't know if I'd do that as an adult, but they said that you have to soak the acorn because if you don't leach out the tannic acid, it's completely poisonous. But is it really? That's my question. Like, is it really that more acidic than coffee? I'm just questioning that. Okay, I, ha I have no earthly idea. And I would also add that there are a lot of things that are on an individual le level. Mm -hmm. uh, every person is an individual, first and foremost. None of us fall necessarily into some kind of absolute category that this is true of humans, and therefore it has to be true of you. I had, a, yeah, I had a grandfather who had three kidneys. He was perfectly healthy. He just happened to have three kidneys. That happens. Uh, I mean, I just, I, I guess I'm always questioning those things, but no, yeah. you shouldn't eat raw acorns, everybody. Like, I'm not telling <laughs> you to go do it. I'm just saying that I did and I lived. That's all. Right. You, you might have really strong uh, kidneys and liver and better than everybody else's. You know, it's possible. Maybe. I don't know. But I was a kid too. This was like 30 something years ago. So maybe I don't think I'd do that today. Yeah. I, I think if we look at pictures of ourselves when we were younger, uh, we, you know, we, we tended to be uh, thinner and it's possible we were in ketosis and we didn't even know it because mm -hmm. everything worked better. And so we could eat anything and still be okay. That's true. That you probably could eat anything like when you're a kid, like you're a kid. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah. And I, I'm not saying do this or don't do that or that's not my purpose in life is to mm -hmm. tell other people what to do. But I think we should, um, what I think is interesting to do. No, not everybody likes to do it. I like to think about it. I want to know why is it this way? You know? Yeah. You want to, and also to the, I mean, there's a lot of, they talk about ketosis, but is a ketogenic diet as prescribed completely ketosis or is the carnivore one a higher level of that? Well, it's easier to do it on the carnivore one. And plus, um, some people are really allergic to certain uh, vegetable matter. I know mm -hmm. that I'm allergic to mushrooms and other people might be allergic to other things that, you know, somebody might be allergic to tomatoes. So if they just eliminate the tomatoes from their diet when they're allergic uh, and just 
get most of their nutrients out of uh, animal based, that might be good for that person. Yeah, definitely. That Well, that's what that lady was saying that went from being vegan to eating meat. And then she wanted to see like if the carnivore, because she had a lot of digestive issues. And she said like, it did help her a little bit. Like she was able to find out certain things. Like she wasn't very specific, but then I guess I have another question. Like, did you know prior to the carnivore diet that you had issues with mushrooms or did that elimination help you figure out the mushrooms? Were the no, problem? I already knew I was allergic you already to knew. mushrooms. Okay, you just I yeah, I also knew that I had developed, and this is not my whole life, but uh, over time, I had developed an allergy to the protein in eggs, but oh. not not to the yolk. Now, the yolk has higher fat. So I'm not one of those people who thinks I'm on the carnivore diet in order to get protein. I don't think I can handle too much protein. I need a high fat diet. Yeah, actually, I think a higher fat diet is more satiating because you could have a really high protein, low fat chicken diet and it wouldn't be very satiating, right? Right. So when I do eat chicken, I eat the skin and I eat, um, you know, I, I will take those Cornish hens and I will bake them in the oven mm -hmm. and the drippings, I, I take the drippings and, and they're my soup. And in the drippings, you've got bone marrow. Mm -hmm. which is really important to have, um, you know, so it gives me a lot of vitamins that I wouldn't otherwise have. That's actually very similar, like to the Asian philosophy, like when they make a, a soup, how they, they put all the bones, they put all the animal matter in the soup and they boil it that way. Like a lot of the Asian soups, like the real yeah. thing do that. Yeah. Yes. So I think, uh, uh, the Asian diet, uh, is, is a very good one for reasons that we're not told. I mean, we're told all sorts of silly things like, oh, rice is good for you. But I, I'm i suspecting that even the rice isn't as pure as we think it is. It's not pure of animal matter. And also when they eat rice, it's not like, oh, we are just gonna eat like lots and lots of rice. Like it's a little bit here and there. It's not like, wow, like this big, like whereas if you go to an American buffet, it's a lot of carbs, like a lot of processed carbs. Like everything is very carby and very processed, very sugar laden. It's different. Right. Now, when, when I went to Taiwan and at first I thought, oh, this is very Japanese style. It didn't seem Chinese to me at all because I was used to uh, Chinese restaurants in the United States are very different from you oh, know, for sure. Yeah. Very noodly, which is not how it is. Yeah. But I went to this restaurant. Everybody from my university went there and all. And, and I wanted to drink something with my meal because I was used to sugary drinks. I was still in that phase when I was drinking a lot of Coca-Cola. Um, and yeah, I was overweight at the time. I'm not now, but I was then. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I couldn't see anything I wanted to drink except for orange juice. So I ordered orange juice with my meal. Well, they didn't bring it until the end because they thought it was a dessert. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. Yeah. I thought you so, wanted that as a dessert, like not as, with the beverage, with the meal. So it's a different mindset. Like Right. Something. So what they use the rice for, and I later learned how to do that. You know, it takes a while to get used to things, but the rice is there to cleanse your palate. You know how when you eat something and then you drink and then you eat something else. Uh, and part of what you're doing when you're drinking is not just that you're thirsty, it's you're cleansing your palate so you will be able to taste the next thing and it won't taste like the first thing, right? Yeah. Uh, so they, they use rice for that. Uh, so between bites, they will take a little bit of rice. The rice is actually full of boiled water because you know rice itself <laughs> it doesn't look like that. No, it's it's very water dense, of course. You know, yeah. I also heard, and I don't know what Amber O'Kern's take on this is, but there are recommendations, and I've tried this for a couple of years, and it's kind of what I always did anyway, that you really shouldn't be drinking a lot of liquids when you consume food because it can slow down your digestion. And I'm kind of not a big beverage person anyway, except for coffee. So I find myself like actually not wanting to drink beverages when I eat. And I find that does help with my, I don't, I don't know her take on that though. I'm curious, like what her theory is on that. Cause I've heard some people recommend that. 
Well, I mean, if I don't ha have a bowl, bowl of rice to cleanse my palate with, I will have some soda water with me. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, but yeah. I've, this is a theory is like you take a few sips, but you don't like drink it. Like, you know how some people oh, yeah. like, you drink lots and lots of water, but I've just heard the recommendation by a few people that you minimize the amount of liquids that you're drinking when you're consuming food. Like, I'm just wondering what her take on that is. Well, we can ask her. Yeah, my, my own feeling has always been that people are told to drink way too much water, mm -hmm. uh, no, which is not meaning that I hate water. Obviously, we need water, but yes, there's water in our food. Yes, there's of course. But here's the thing I like, I really struggle with that all my life. Like, I can't tell people how little water I drink because people would be horrified if they knew that I can barely sometimes drink a cup of water in a day. And sometimes I force myself to drink more water and I feel like it's so unnatural. I just can't do it. Do you see what, what I'm saying? Like, I Yeah, just, I see what you're saying. I'm on your side on this. <laughs> I feel the same way. I mean, I will drink when I'm thirsty and when I'm not thirsty, I will not drink, but I will sometimes drink like a sip of water to cleanse my palate so I can chase the next item on the agenda. But I don't have this feeling I have to drink eight glasses of water. First of all, I am five foot two. And this recommendation is probably for a six foot two tall man. Um, I mean, the idea that we should all drink the same amount of water is ridiculous or eat the same amount of food. And it it's based on sense. a 1923 experiment, which was debunked like about a decade ago, but now that it's back again for some reason. Yeah, I saw that on my timeline. One of my friends was recommending that we sh uh, show children that we drink a lot of water so they will. And it's ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. I can't do it. Like, okay. I have some other theories about the low water consumption, but I guess, I don't know, people would be mad about that. Like, I just wonder, like, maybe, like, some people, I don't know. I'm not going to comment on it because it seems people are very heated about this and they think if you're not drinking a gallon of water a day that you're doing something wrong so i would love to ask amber's <laughs> opinion on the subject well i think i think you can deplete your mineral reserve if you drink too much water this is that's what I think. kind of what i think and i've actually like really stepped back on even drinking a lot of water and i found that the only time i really crave water is if it's really warm outside and i've done a lot of act physical activity Right. And even then you should be careful. Like if you are dehydrated, drink something that will also keep your electrolytes up. Don't just drink water because you could, uh, what is that called? Um, you could actually have water intoxication and that can be deadly. Yeah, I've heard that. I just, I mean, I know that's a side note, but I'm just really curious what her take is on the subject. <laughs> Yeah, I've never heard her talk very much about water one way or the other. Okay, I just, I'm just, it's just curiosity. It's probably a off topic a little bit, but hey, I just thought. Yeah, we can ask her. We can definitely ask her. And I don't know how much she's into animal nutrition. I did tell her that I am planning to ask her about that. But she did mention the thing about the cecum uh, with chimpanzees. And I, that's where she caught my attention. Oh, interesting. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So I, I, I do want to know about that, but I think her attitude is not this, uh, she's not going to force anything. She's not a jingoist. She's not going to force anything on anyone. Uh, she understands about people who are vegetarian and who are vegan. And I think she's respectful. Yeah. And I know she used to be when I, she's, she's not like religious about, I actually kind of don't want to talk to a lot of vegans because they're kind of the ones that you kind they're they're the ones that are judging people it seems like more than other people really yeah well that's because a lot of people are are vegan not for their health but for the sake of the planet and so that that makes them sort of like puritans you know yeah uh, I, I when you shop i know i've said this sometimes you go shopping at the store and you ask for a plastic bag should you be scared to ask for the plastic bag, even though you're paying for it, but sometimes you are, like people will say things. Well, the, the funny thing about it is before they came out with those plastic bags, I always asked, I, I, want, I liked the paper bags. Yeah, yeah, I did too. But then they said that the paper bags were bad for the environment. So then they went to the plastic ones. So 
Right. And actually paper bags are biodegradable yeah. and yeah, you cut down trees to make them, but then you also grow trees to make them. Yeah. And a lot of our lumber is from forests that have been planted for paper production. That's what they kind of don't really tell you. They make yeah. There's like mowing down these, but they actually do have like tree farms for paper production. So anyway, that's not the here or there, but yeah, paper bags are back in vogue again, but 30 years ago, they were the antichrist. <laughs> so now that we've pretty much covered the nutrition thing, mm -hmm. uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the Vidu Vid uh, video that you saw with Yaron Brook? Yeah, I would like to talk a little bit about it. I started just watching some of it and I, I think I kind of get why he has a big following is he's part of the skeptic atheist community, which is a newer and bigger thing. And I think the reason that him and I mean, I don't know Yohan Brooks' background. Was he religious at one time? Did he like become an atheist or something? No. No, no. He, he, I don't think he was ever religious. He's, uh, he's from Israel. Okay. So you know how that is. People assume that he's a Jew and he's not going to deny that ethnically that's what he is, but he's not a believer. Neither was Ayn Rand. Okay. So I'm just, I, but I know with Vidu Vids, I think the reason he wants to talk to Johan Brook and other people is he loves dialogue and he loves debate. And I think with Vidu Vids, like with some of his past videos, it seems like he's libertarian curious. He's not completely there yet, but he's beginning to see the values of a more like free market economy. And he's having these dialogues with like fellow atheists and they're actually having meetups and he has a following because there's a lot of people that are leaving religion and they can first, like, they feel like for the first time they can kind of openly talk about it. I think that's why he's talking to all these different people. That's the impression yeah. I get. And he has a following for that reason, because it's already built in. There's people in the same situation as him. They've left a certain religion and they're looking for like a place, a safe, I don't like the term safe space, but just like a place where they can have an open dialogue with people without feeling like they're being judged, so to speak, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it, it's okay. You know, there are some people who are like born again religious people, and then there are people who are also like born again atheists or something. Yeah, and, yeah. But if you've been whatever it is all your life, then you tend to be more tolerant and you tend to not feel that you have to force either your belief or your unbelief on other people. You know what I'm saying? So I have a question like, did you have any like, I just watched the video briefly. The reason I sent the video to you is because I know you follow Johan Brook and I thought Vidu Vids is interesting, but I don't listen to everything he says. Was there anything about the video that you thought was interesting or just the well, topic? I thought the, yeah, I thought the discussion, I, I thought Johan Brook did a great job of expressing his own views, though, although I don't necessarily agree with all of them. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the places where I would say Johan Brook was very strong you know, did a good job of expressing his views is when uh, uh, Vids was talking about um, what we should do for the planet. Mm -hmm. And Yellen Brooks said, really, do you care about the planet or do you care about people? Yeah. And, <laughs> and then he said, you know, cause I personally, I care about people, but I don't care about the planet. And while I don't, I'm not sure that I agree with him. He did that really well. You know, you know what I'm saying? He did no, that. I know what you're saying. I, I kind of get what he's saying is like, everybody's like the planet. Well, you know the planet, but do we really know? Can we really say, because the science keeps evolving, what's going to happen to the planet in 50 years? Because they've turned out to be wrong about a couple of things when it came to climate change and how they explained it in the past. And now they've kind of retracted some of that. Do you see what I, I don't know. Is that what Eric yeah, was But Yellow and Brooke was was really talking like, okay, whatever is best for humanity, that's what I'm for. And if it's best for humanity for us to leave this planet after we have plundered it and go to a different planet, mm -hmm. um, you know, as long as business is going strong, I don't care. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I see what you're saying. Like he's open to like, we use the planet to help people. And then maybe in the future we will be, it's an interesting discussion. Hmm. <laughs> you know what? I was just now notified of this particular live stream. Isn't that funny? 
<laughs> it's like all of a sudden this thing jumped in. Oh, nutrition and animals. Aya Katz is live. Right now it told me. Yeah, that. it's a del- sometimes I get a d- notification a couple days later <laughs> that there was a live stream. I don't yeah. think notifications are very good at pushing out. Yeah. Uh, so so here's the thing. I agree with you on Brooke that I'm actually interested in people, but I'm also interested in animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't really care about the inanimate planet, you know, mm-hmm. per se, but this is the home of a lot of animals that I do care about. Yes. Um, and there's another thing that goes beyond this. When he was playing that game of, I only care about people, he forgot that he was supposed to care about individuals and he was starting to care about people collectively. And Uh, most of the time, most of the time he will make that distinction between individuals and the collective. And he'll say, I believe in the rights of individuals, not of the collective. Now here's where I think his argument was misleading. He was starting to tell us that if we didn't have our industrial base, Mm -hmm. Um, then our population would be much smaller. And I agree with him. That is true. Yeah, true. But then he made it sound like that would be the equivalent of dooming all sorts of people to die. But the way this came about is the population grew as our industrialization grew. And if we hadn't industrialized, that's not like sending people to death camps. That would be just keeping the population a little bit small, the human population. Smaller, which would be better for each individual human among those people. Do you yeah. see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. Also, one thing we have to just put out there that's not popular to say is as the human population expands exponentially, it is a threat to animals because their habitats will be chopped down and taken away to build more shopping centers, places to live. I mean, you know, it, it, it's just that we need those animals too. And that's the other thing. If we want to be healthy human beings, well, at least for my diet, I know your diet is different, but for my diet, yeah, you do need, I need roaming space for cattle. Um, I can't have them all stockaded away somewhere in a tiny industrialized uh, place for making meat because actually I like cattle who've had a good life. Yeah. You want to do it in a sustainable way that has worked for thousands of years <sighs> right I don't and know I, how, anyway go ahead I'm yeah, so yeah yeah go ahead no I didn't I was it. just gonna say like I don't want to sound like dark but would you in 2019 just knowing that the way things are going I just don't know like having kids like that sounds really dark but just for them to grow up in this world of what it's gonna be you know in the next 30 40 years okay I'm gonna uh, Okay, I, I, my view is different from yours. I, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. But, uh, but mine is very different. I remember when I wanted to have a baby and it was the most important thing in my life. Um, yeah. Uh, and I am so grateful that I have my daughter. And there were, of course. Of, yeah. there were a lot of people who, who took me aside and said, Aya, you don't have to have a baby. Um, you shouldn't have a baby. Um, uh, leave that to other people. Oh, no, no. I think if you want to have a baby, you should definitely have a baby for sure. I'm not telling people not to do that. Well, yeah, but there's this other issue, um, which is once a population, for instance, let, let's take Japan. You yeah. Know, in Japan, they are not replacing themselves. No. Um, and this is, I don't know what's going to happen to them. You know, I really don't know what they're going to have a major crisis because they're going to have a large aging population and a small working populace and they will have a social crisis. How will their society function? Right. So I, I don't think that this idea that you just limit your birth is the best way to get zero population growth. I'm sorry, but I don't. Oh, no, no. I don't think anybody should limit their birth. I just. I guess I'm thinking about it from just the bureaucratic standpoint. I just feel like, what are things going to be? Yeah, no, I think we are all happier. This is just me speaking my truth. This is what I feel. Uh, Maybe other people are different, but 
I feel that human beings were intended to be a relatively small uh, community on earth or to be part of a small community on earth. You know, there might be lots of other humans in a different place, but you've never met them, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and there should be many more other animals than us. And that will actually make us more important. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold on a minute. So I'm not like anti people having children. I just question like you have a child right now and what society will be like, but maybe it's a really positive experience for most people. I just think, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm not uh, having children. I just, I just don't know sometimes about society. I think, I think we, we're going to have to shelve this discussion. It's okay. one. Uh, but uh, there are some things going on, and Bo's about to get some okay. chances. <laughs> so I'll talk to you tomorrow, and hopefully we, we've interested enough people in this topic that mm -hmm. we'll have a lot of viewers on the other channel tomorrow night with Amber O'Hearn. Okay, have a nice afternoon. Okay, you too, Julia. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.